Greetings, true believers, and welcome to another spectacular episode of History of the Marvel Universe. If you enjoy this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more marvelous content. This week's tale begins with a gifted surgeon and research biologist named Dr. Curtis Connors. Born in Florida, Kurt lived near the Everglades with his wife Martha and his son Billy. He was always a highly determined man. He pushed himself to be the top of his class in medical school and later earned twin doctorates in biology and biochemistry. However, his medical research at the University of Florida was interrupted when his country called and Dr. Curtis Connors traveled overseas to serve as an army surgeon and battlefield medic. There are some conflicting accounts on exactly what happened to Kurt next. One source claims that Connor's arm was struck by shrapnel from a phosphorus grenade while he was performing surgery. However, he was so concerned with his patient that he neglected to properly treat himself and the wound became gangrenous. In another telling of the story, Kurt attempted to save a wounded American soldier while stationed in the Middle East. However, the soldier's body had been rigged to explode and Connors was badly injured. Regardless of the exact circumstances, Kurt's arm needed to be amputated and his career as a surgeon came to an abrupt end. As a side note, while in a combat support hospital, Connors briefly met another biochemist named Ted Salas. While Salas was not originally from Florida, he was later stationed there where he became the monstrous creature known as Man-Thing. Connors returned to the United States, and although his wife Martha attempted to comfort him, Kurt was distraught. He longed to hold his wife in his arms the way that he used to. Seeking a solution, Kurt threw himself completely into new avenues of research. He grew increasingly interested in reptiles and their ability to regrow lost limbs, and began developing a chemical serum capable of bestowing that ability to humans. After months of rigorous experimentation and a successful animal test, it was time to apply the formula to a human subject. Dr. Connors took the serum himself, and within a matter of minutes, his lost arm had regrown. However, the effects of the serum did not end there, and Dr. Curtis Connors transformed into a massive humanoid lizard. He attempted to formulate a counter-serum and return himself to normal, but he could feel his intellect slipping away as his thoughts became clouded. Hoping to keep his wife and child safe, he ran into the dense Florida swamps before his mind was lost. Developing a separate persona entirely, the lizard defended his territory and rumors of the creature began to spread nationwide. Displaying the ability to control other reptiles, the lizard began gathering creatures with the goal of destroying mankind. While in New York City, the publisher of the Daily Bugle newspaper challenged the vigilante Spider-Man to defeat the monster. Spider-Man traveled to Florida, and knowing that Kurt Connors was an expert on reptiles, he spoke with his wife Martha and learned the truth. Using Kurt's notes and equipment, the masked hero was able to complete the anti-serum. And during a difficult battle, he force-fed the antidote to the lizard. Uh, the creature changed back to human form and the lizard persona subsided, although his regrown arm disappeared as well. Regardless, he was relieved to be able to use that arm to hold his wife once again. Connors remained allies with Spider-Man, aiding him on several occasions after moving to New York himself. However, more than once he relapsed and transformed back into the lizard. Initially, the lizard did not even realize that he and Kurt Connors were one in the same. Instead, he believed himself to be an actual reptile that had been transformed by Connors' formula. Usually, Spider-Man would be the one to stop the lizard and return him to normal. Sometimes, the transformations would be triggered by extreme stress. Other times, it would be exposure to chemicals that were used in the original serum. He sometimes traveled between New York and Florida, one time battling Man-Thing in the swamp. However, the general public was not aware that Kurt Connors was the lizard. In fact, he was at one point recruited by S.H.I.E.L.D. to study dinosaur tissue gathered from the Savage Land, a hidden jungle filled with prehistoric animals. He was assigned a partner, Dr. Vincent Stegron, who evidently was aware of Connors' dual identity. Stegron grew obsessed with the research and used a similar serum to transform himself into a dinosaur man. 
As part of his research on cellular regeneration, Kurt also developed a machine called the Enervator. He once used this machine to restore Spider-Man's strength, but a short circuit left Connor shaken. Furthermore, Stegron soon kidnapped Kurt's son Billy in an attempt to force Connors into helping him. This combination of factors caused Kurt to transform once again, and by this point the Lizard realized the true nature of their relationship. The Lizard considered Stegron an enemy, and so the two reptilian opponents clashed. Although Stegron's transformation appeared to be permanent, Spider-Man was able to return Connors to normal and prevent Stegron's plot to destroy humanity with an army of resurrected dinosaurs. After that, Connors was offered a grant at Empire State University to continue his research there. During this time, he performed experimentation on an iguana with his Enervator machine. However, feedback from the machine began to trigger his transformation. Stumbling, Kurt fell into the machine, which caused his energy to be transferred into the iguana, along with aspects of the lizard persona. Transforming into a similar creature, the iguana threatened Kurt's wife and child. And so Connors used the Enervator machine to intentionally induce his transformation for the first time. That battle ultimately ended when Spider-Man used a modified version of the machine to drain all the lizard energy from Connors and transfer it into the iguana. This both cured Connors and caused the iguana to overload and discharge the energy, reverting it back to a regular reptile. However, Spider-Man had not properly shielded himself from the portable innervator and later transformed into a lizard himself. This time, it was Dr. Connors who tracked down the spider lizard and returned him to normal. It seemed as though the Connors nightmare was finally over, and for a time it was. But then came the interdimensional being known as the Beyonder and the first Secret Wars. Wishing to test the strength of good versus evil, the Beyonder abducted groups of Earth's mightiest heroes and villains and pitted them against one another on a patchwork planet. And one of the captured individuals was Kurt Connors, who'd been changed back into the Lizard by the Beyonder. After sustaining an injury in battle, the Lizard retreated to a swampy area where he befriended the hero known as the Wasp. He was ultimately returned to human form once again and returned to Earth with Spider-Man after the war ended. However, Kurt had been gone for a week and returned in tattered clothing after promising that the Lizard was gone forever. Until she could decide what was best for her family, Martha took Billy and left. Though distraught, the next time Connors transformed, he maintained a level of control over his lizard form. He was even able to use this to rescue Martha and Billy from a criminal mastermind known as the Owl. For a while, he had control and only transformed if he consciously willed it. However, when New York was invaded by demons from the Hell Dimension of Limbo in an event known as the Inferno, the evil lizard persona again took control of Dr. Connors. Sometime after that, the voodoo priestess, Calypso, used her arcane powers to take control of the lizard. Making the creature go completely feral, she attempted to use him to get revenge on Spider-Man for the death of her lover, Craven the Hunter. Inside the Lizard, Kurt Connors was aware but unable to assert control. When Calypso was defeated by Spider-Man, Connors regained control, but he was still trapped in Lizard form. Wandering the sewers, he discovered an abandoned lab belonging to Dr. Octopus and decided to try and reverse the voodoo magic. He used a sample of Billy's blood to try and accomplish this, not knowing that the equipment was booby-trapped. However, Spider-Man was able to prevent the machine from exploding and Connors returned to human form once again. This time, Kurt confessed to his crimes as the Lizard and was sentenced to imprisonment in the vault until he could be cured again. While he was there, Calypso broke in, looking to regain control of her pet. She forced him to transform but was unable to take control of his mind and the Lizard struck her down. The creature escaped, but was pursued by a merciless bounty hunter named Warrant, who went so far as to take Billy hostage. Warrant tracked his prey all the way to Florida, and the lizard was seemingly killed, his body falling into the murk. However, Connor survived and was able to resist transforming once again. Under unrevealed circumstances, the authorities stopped pursuing him. 
This is likely in part because of Warren's unlawful behavior towards his family. Kurt still wanted to purge any trace of the lizard from his body and took on a lab assistant named Aldo Quadrini to do so. They concocted a new formula designed to counteract the original lizard serum and Aldo tested it by injecting it into a severed piece of the lizard's tail. This had the unexpected result of causing the tail to mutate into a second lizard creature without any trace of humanity within it. This new lizard battled Spider-Man, but when it later threatened Kurt's family, Connors transformed himself to kill it. While not completely cured, Connors continued to demonstrate some control over his transformations, and so Martha returned to him. However, some time later, she and Billy were diagnosed with cancer resulting from pollutants from an industrial lab near their Florida home. Kurt sued the company responsible, but the Monado Corporation refused to admit fault. The stress caused Kurt to transform again, and he battled a serpentine mercenary hired by Monado named Yith. However, Yith felt sympathy for Connors after Martha passed away. Thankfully, Billy's cancer went into remission and Manano's misdeeds were exposed. Because of his wife's death, however, Connors transformed into the Lizard to try and take revenge on Manano CEO Clifton Arliss. Spider-Man stopped the Lizard again, but because of what he'd done, Yith killed Arliss herself. After that, the line between Kurt Connors and the Lizard began to blur. To keep his son safe, he surrendered to the police by staging a bank robbery and letting himself be arrested. However, he didn't stay in prison as the Lizard was later recruited into the Green Goblin's short-lived Sinister 12. And not long after that, Stegron, the Dinosaur Man, used a relic called the Rock of Life to drive him feral. In this state, Connors injected his own son with a Lizard Serum, transforming Billy into a similar creature. Fortunately, Billy was cured by Mr. Fantastic of the Fantastic Four. Connor's research would also impact the lives of several others. One was a drug addict known only as Freak who stumbled into one of his labs. Haphazardly injecting himself with whatever he could find, Freak was transformed into a super adaptive creature whose appearance matched his name. Another was one of Kurt's graduate students, a woman named Melody Kusama. A double amputee herself, Kusama stole the lizard formula and created a more stable version to regrow her lost legs. While her mind was unaffected by the transformation, Kusama's formula was tailored to her own specific DNA and couldn't be replicated for anyone else. At Kurt's suggestion, she joined the Avengers Initiative program for superhero training under the name Komodo. Connors, meanwhile, developed a serum to suppress his own transformations, albeit temporarily, and began the process of making amends and regaining custody of his son Billy. He found employment at a company called Fellcorp Industries and began to grow fond of his lab assistant Marissa. However, the lizard persona still scraped at the insides of Connor's brain, attempting to claw its way to the surface. Kurt suffered his worst relapse yet after his employer, Brian King, slept with Marissa. The lizard used these feelings to try and assert control, and when Connors attempted to inject himself with his serum, King stopped him, not realizing that the formula was meant to prevent his transformation rather than cause it. And so the lizard emerged again and murdered Brian King, along with five others in the building. Again, Kurt was aware but had no control over the lizard's actions, a prisoner in his own flesh. Even worse, the lizard decided to assert dominance over Connors in the most decisive way he could, by going after his young. Spider-Man tried to stop him, but Billy had already been kidnapped by Anna Craven, the daughter of Craven the Hunter. Anna had also grievously injured Billy's foster mother, leaving Spider-Man to save her life. As a part of the Craven family's plot to subject Spider-Man to a gauntlet of dangerous enemies, Anna left Billy for the lizard. In the most savage, animalistic act he'd ever committed, the Lizard murdered Billy Connors while Kurt was unable to stop him. His human persona completely went into remission, and for all intents and purposes, Kurt Connors was dead. 
The lizard shed its skin and took on a new form, even developing the ability to compel nearby humans to similar animalistic behavior. After another battle with Spider-Man, he fled into the sewers and hid there for months. The vampiric doctor, Michael Morbius, wanted to return the lizard to human form and developed a cure using DNA he'd harvested from Billy's exhumed corpse. Morbius and the lizard had actually first encountered each other years prior. While Spider-Man disapproved of the living vampire's methods, for the sake of anyone else who might be hurt by the lizard, he helped administer the cure. While this successfully restored Kurt Connor's body, his mind was still that of the lizard. And so the lizard posed as Connors until he was able to inject himself with a new serum, changing to yet another form. However, he began to feel guilt in a way that the lizard never had before, hallucinating and seeing others as Billy and Martha, and Spider-Man as Kurt. In a desperate attempt to save his friend, Spider-Man administered the cure once again, this time injecting it directly into the lizard's brain. It seemed as if he'd failed. The lizard remained in his monstrous form and was arrested and imprisoned. However, in one way the cure did work. The lizard persona was destroyed and Dr. Connors regained his mind, but was trapped in the lizard's body. He decided to stay quiet about it, accepting his punishment for every wrong he had done. Eventually, the lizard was visited by a man calling himself the Jackal, the head of New U Technologies. The Jackal coerced the lizard into aiding him in his schemes by using his cloning technology to resurrect Martha and Billy. The revived clones required daily medication to survive, and so Connors did what he needed to keep his family alive. There is, of course, a long story surrounding the clone conspiracy, but the important thing for today's tale is that when the Jackal's plans were undone, he sent out a signal causing all of the clones to degenerate, including Martha and Billy. In order to save his family, Connors injected them with a modified version of the lizard formula which counteracted the cellular degradation and only partially transformed them. Billy resented living in the sewers as a lizard, but all three of them maintained full control of their reptilian forms. And Connors even managed to restore his ability to transform at will. After turning over a number of patents to Empire State University and demonstrating his full control over his lizard form, Dr. Connors was allowed to return to a teaching position. This is also largely because he implanted an adamantium encased inhibitor chip onto his neck which prevented the lizard from harming another living creature. And so, at the end of the day, things worked out okay for Dr. Curtis Connors, aka The Lizard. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, share the video, and subscribe for more marvelous content. Be sure to leave a comment letting me know what Marvel hero or villain you want to hear about next, and as always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, as well as links to other places you can find me, including my Patreon page, where for only a dollar a month you can get your name in these special thanks here. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!